Brother D, in the movie, you touch on how there was an incident at a pub with your brother yeah. um, who ended up having to do like a fair bit of jail time. Yes. Um, was that, when that happened, was that all tied in with like the Booyah Tribe New Zealand thing that was going on at the time? Yeah, uh, you know. It's a street incident, so yeah, we can't yeah, really yeah. divulge that. But yes is the yeah. answer. Yes, yes, it was. And uh, because for a lot of us, we used to work um, the doors. We were security on the door. And, you know, as you know, when, when you work on the door, a lot of trouble comes your way. So, you know, um, your job is to protect everybody that's there. And, you know, so, yes, the incident happened. And, uh, and yes, we were there supporting some of our brothers. Now, in the movie, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's said that uh, your brother caught a life sentence due to that incident. Now, in Australia, a life sentence is 25 years. Yep. In America, I think a life sentence is like actual life. Yeah. In New Zealand, is it the same as America or Australia or different? I think life sentence in New Zealand is 14 years, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it's moved yeah. to 17, but yeah. you have to do a minimum of 10 without yeah. parole as life sentence in New Zealand. But unfortunately, our brother never came home from prison, so... Yeah. My brother John died he, um, uh, in jail at, um, after he'd done about seven years. Oh, shit. Sorry, man. No, it's all good, brother. It's part of the life you, story. You, you ask the question, I answer it, brother, you know. Um, but yeah, we, we carry John with us everywhere we go, so you know what I mean? You know, he was, a, you know, him going to jail was a catalyst of, um, you know, of me changing my life and, uh, you know, doing, trying, you know, trying to get this whole Dawn Raid thing on board with Andy and, and you know, hence why we have the movie. That know? was the whole positive thing. Dee wanted to have a studio and a place for, you know, because inside a prison, they started working on their music, you know, and they, they actually had a band in prison, yeah. you know, DJing in prison. And there was a hope and a dream that when they came out of prison, when they came home, there'd be a music studio and an opportunity for them to work in. That was, that was part of the original yeah. Southside Story 1. We dedicated yeah. that album and featured a song. Um, From Waikiria Prison. Waikiria Prison, which was, you know, live on that album. First New Zealanders to ever put a prison song on an album, by the yeah. way. They recorded it in jail and then they passed, they hand over the tape to me and, and you know. And we mastered uh, it. We put mastered it, on the it record. we put it on the record. And yeah, like Andy said, you know, um, a lot of uh, doing Dawn Ray, because he, my brother John was more musical than I, you know, and uh, so, you know, we knew he was going to do like, he was doing a long time in jail. Um, so, you know, nobody's going to employ him when he comes out. So, you know, the whole idea of Dawn Raid was to set up so when he does come out that, you know, he, he's got a job that he can, he loves doing and that he'll enjoy and, you know, hopefully spend the rest of his life doing. Man. And I mean, look, if, Obviously, we don't we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. But are you able to tell us how he passed away in prison? Yeah, he um, he uh, they uh, the, they said that um his uh they were doing weights and and I and you know the boys that were in the weight room with him at the po at that time good, uh, friends, uh, good friends and family friends and they said he he just finished doing a, a heavy set. And he was just sitting on the side of the rack. And then all of a sudden, he just uh, fell back. And they couldn't, um, you know, he, he, he was literally gone from there. And, and they said that one of his valves bursted and, and, and he had a tear in the heart all at the one time. So um, they, they were lifting heavy weights, yeah. you know, it's prison. They're weightlifters. It was like a 200 kg bench press. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True story. Yeah. So, you know. But, and the, the other two guys that were in prison with him that day are, yeah. are now free men, have completed their yeah. life sentences at home, you know. This is the struggle of hip-hop around the world. This is why we chose to do something positive, because of these incidents, you know. Man, and I guess I'm, I'm trying to get my head around, first of all, an incident like that happens, mm -hmm. yeah. and your brother gets 14 yeah. years, and then he never comes home. Yeah. Trust me, brother. How? Trust me, Dawn Raid almost ne didn't be. Nearly didn't happen because yeah. of that incident. Because of that incident. We, we, yeah. we started and then that happened. Yeah. That, that happened in 99, so we had to stop everything and bury our yeah. brother. And, and it took me a while to get out of it, you know. Um, 
you know, it's, uh, I don't know if you've lost a brother or you have a brother or someone close to you, you lose. And he was my little brother too. And if you understand Polynesian culture, um, you know, when you're born, your, your ultimate job, your, your, your dad will tell you, is you make sure you look after your little one. And so, mm -hmm. f you know, first of all, I felt like I failed in that by him going to jail. And then, then he dies, you know, and, and that's, I don't know, that's even more failure. And so that time was a real hard time and a real hard period of our life. I imagine that unfortunately, uh, you know, that's not the only time that something like that happens in South Auckland. Yeah, you got it. It's every week for us, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I guess I just wanted to also briefly touch on that. Uh, yeah. Like in, in around that time, uh, how severe was the gang and the drug situation in your neighborhoods, in your area? It was full on, man. It was the life we were living, you know. Thankfully, back then, there was no meth. There was no, you know, it was just weed and, and things like that. But, you know, the bar scene in South Auckland um, and any of the poor communities, it wasn't, it wasn't heavily policed. I mean, they, they policed it, but they left us to our own devices, you know what I mean? So um, battles were fought on the street. And if people lost those battles, those battles continued and spilled over to neighborhood versus neighborhood. And, you know, again, this is why we wanted to get out. This is why Brother D went back to school, business school, to re-educate because there was no future in it. And uh, thankfully, you know, 20 years later, we haven't had any uh, significant incidents like that, you know. But it's a daily struggle because, you know, it's, it's like the movie. Just when you thought you were out, they pull you back in. Anything can happen at any time in any community, you know? It's like... Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's like any community around the world, bro. You know, um, and it's really... And the problem is, is like the media grab hold of it and they highlight it. And so, you know, the kids of the neighbourhood, you know, try and grab... Um, try and gain reputations from that, you know? And that's, you know, that's... That's, that's where it gets a little bit out of hand. You know, every, every, every kid coming up, you know, wants, wants to make his own name. You know, they want to make their own claim of, you know, of their hood. And, you know, these established gangs in, uh, in each of those neighborhoods. And so, you know, it's in, sometimes, you know, the young people, it's an easy out for them as well. You know, some, some of them mm. actually choose that life. You know, but um, yeah, it's, it, it's just one of those things. You know, um, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. When that incident happened, did you guys already know each other or you hadn't met at that point yet? Nah, I met, I met D like four years later. That happened in 92. I didn't meet Brother D until 1996. So, um, but the first time I met John was in prison, you know, on a visiting day. So, um, nah, like I said, Brother D lived three lives. He was a legend before the music. Long, long before the music, he was already a legend. So when I met him, he was already leader in the street, but he was also in a, in a new and exciting rap group called Lost Tribe, which was part of Urban Pacifica Records. So we had, we had had a taste of success with the song. Remember How Bizarre, OMC? Biggest, biggest, biggest. You'll know it. As soon as you hear the song, How Bizarre, you'll know it. It's a massive pop hit around the world. That came from Otara and from a family called the Fuimanas. And so we had already seen that happen. Um, and D was a part of all of that already the day I met him. So, you know. The, the, the last